Hey guys, how are you today? So I decided to rework my teeny tiny watercolor kit, which is in an Altoids was in an Altoids Smalls um, container, and I had these round bottle caps in here that I'd glued down and then filled with different kinds of paint. And I did record this, so I'll try to find the recording for that and where I did it. I'm not sure if it was in a live broadcast or not, um, but I'll try to find out where that is. Anyway, um, this was the original one that had the um, little paint chips are falling out of the caps, okay, that had it in there. I had two of these Altoid Smalls tins, so I took the one that didn't have the bottle caps in it and I created little wells in the container and by doing this I was able to get 10 different colors of paint in here instead of just six which I prefer at least eight but ten is even better um, so yay and then I made of course a color key for it that will fit in the lid and I have the lid um, to do some mixing and I may stick a piece of UPO paper in here um, I'm not exactly sure yet but UPO paper is water resistant and um, it would make a good mixing service without having to paint the metal and so I may do that at some point I'm not exactly sure yet but anyway it's just been sitting open and drying I thought I would show you how exactly I did that because I got a lot of questions about it and this is my <clears throat> sort of micro mini watercolor kit that I usually have in my handbag and it has the teeny tiny Altoids tin in it it's got a water brush a piece of eraser a small pencil, a piece of paper towel, a dropper, and some watercolor paper. And yes, it's a little bit tight, but I like this box because it is so small, and I do put usually this rubber band around it. Like that. And I can just put that in my purse and take it, take it out anywhere with me. I do have this little teeny tiny uh, watercolor journal that I made which it should be in the same video as the Altoids tin I don't know I'll try to find um, try to find it if I want to take that with me it'll fit underneath the rubber band and it just the whole thing fits in my handbag so it's really cool for right now I want to leave it open because I want I just put that paint in there yesterday and I want those paints to completely dry out before I close it up so that they don't get moldy there we go. They're still damp. So we're going to just take all of this and put it aside. And the plastic box is the box that I bought some giant paper clips or binder clips or something in at Target. That I know it's an up and up box. I think it's from like the really large paper clips. Um, I did recently from Wet Paint Art get these in. Are these cute or what? Look how tiny these are. Now here's an Altoid Smalls tin and here is this little tin. They're about the same size this way but this one is only half the size, half the width or depth. This has a plastic bottom but a metal top. This is intended to be a children's like keychain. It's got a little loop on it. It's a children's watercolor set. It comes with a little brush, which is, you know, really that's garbage. But, um, and it has little cakes in it that I'm sure are just, you know, they're not great paints, but you could pop them out and put your own paints in there. And you could have something like this in a container like that and have eight, this is eight color. So that would be good. And you've already got a mixing area up here. So this would work. And they're teeny tiny. Look how cute they are. They were less than $3 each. Um, at wetpaintart.com. I'll try to put the link in the description below. I am going to keep one and I'm going to gift to the others um, or put them in a mystery box. I haven't decided yet um, and I have to pick which one I want and honestly getting rid of any of them, I'm really wanting to keep all three of them but I'm not going to. Um, but I do want to keep one of them even if I never use it and I always keep it like this because at this point I just collect pocket watercolor tins and this is just too cute not to collect. So I love that. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is, before we do this, is I'm going to take these old colors that were in here 
and I'm going to put each one in its own baggie. These do have uh, watercolors in them. Five of them are Koi, and one of them is um, Blick brand um, from the store Dick Blick. I'm going to put each one in its own little baggie. I get these little bags at the Japanese dollar store, Daiso. I'm putting them in their own little baggie because like that one, some of the paint is really dry and it's chipping and falling out of the little bottle cap that I put it in originally. And there's a reason that we're doing this. So I don't want to waste the paint. I never want to waste paint. And there's a color key here that I made to fit the Altoid Smalls tin. Some of these bags don't want to open. Holy cow. All right. And then one more. The yellow. So we've got lemon yellow, vermilion, crimson, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and then Dick Blick Payne's gray. Those are the colors. I'm going to take all the little bags. Hopefully they fit in here may not fit in here. This is too small. <clears throat> okay. We'll use this. So I'm going to take all these little bags of watercolor paint and the color key and it's going to go in this bag and this also is going to be re-gifted or go into a mystery box. So we're going to tape that shut. those aside. So now that we've done all that and we've got our tin all cleaned out and the epoxy glue that I used to glue those in um, peeled right off honestly it came right out with, which was no problem. I just get the any dregs of leftover paint off. Okay so now I've got just white Sculpey polymer clay and the first thing I'm going to do is fit a piece to the bottom of the Altoid Smalls tin. So I'm just really, I, I do have a roller thing. Let's see, wait. Oh, there we go. And then I just sort of do this to it and push it down. And that's going to leave an impression in the clay that I can then cut away the extra. I am by no means um, a polymer clay expert. In fact, I'm probably the exact opposite. But this is just creating the inside of the watercolor container, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work. Um, you could do this with any container, but um, if you have a bigger box, you probably just can use standard half or full pans to get your paints in there. This box is so teeny tiny that you won't, you could still do that, but you won't get very many colors in it, which is why I decided to do this and just kind of create my own wells in the bottom of the box. So I'm going to fit this in, push it out to all the edges. Okay, I really wanted to do this and create little, basically little, little bowls that the paint is sitting in so that when I spray water in here and I get the paints wet or I drop water here and get the paints wet I don't have to worry about the metal tin rusting at some point because the water is going into and staying inside of the polymer clay little bowls. 
just in case you were wondering why we were doing it that way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna need some more polymer clay, so. I just wanna use white. You could use any color, really. It doesn't probably matter, but I think white looks nicer. So now we're just gonna make a, a snake. Um, one that's not too skinny. Okay, and then we're gonna flatten it. Okay. So then I'm going to cut off a piece to go across the width of the um, Altoid tin. And I'm going to run it across the middle like that. I'm going to put my reading glasses on. Okay. And I'm going to zoom you in close. I'm going to use a variety of little tools here to push the clay, um, the little, the little um, divider here I just made, to push it down into the clay that's on the bottom. I should have probably done the sides first. I just realized I forgot to do the sides. Oops. When I did the other one, I did all the way around the edge first, which probably makes more sense, but it's all right. Either way, don't forget to do the sides. Okay, it's a really tight, small space, so use your some tools, uh, popsicle sticks, toothpicks, um, whatever you have to manipulate the clay into place and seal up all the holes. to push the flat pieces down into the bottom. Dog's having a fun time out there barking at somebody. It takes a few minutes. right here. So make sure there's no holes. You don't want to see the metal through the clay. That's another reason to use white because if I miss something I'll be able to see the dark metal through the clay really easy. So I have this and I, I don't know what this is. I think it's a lace making tool or something. It's from my grandmother's sewing box. I don't know what it is, but it's got a rounded blunt end and it's not too big. And it works for really helping push the two pieces of clay into each other. So now we're going to make um, our um, walls going the other way and you can you know make as many wells as you want in this one I made ten five on each each row but that's really up to you how many you make 
It's so warm here, I almost don't even have to condition the clay. You could use an air dry clay. This is not one of those. This is a clay that you have to bake. Um, but whatever you use is fine. You could do it like I originally did and do it with bottle caps. Okay, I'm having trouble rolling this one. You can't even see what I'm doing. Oh, let's see. And like I said, I'm no expert with polymer clay, so you know I'm sure there's people out there could that could make it look neater and prettier. Um, you want to bake it according to the package directions when you're done, and you get it all put together the way you want it to be. All right, that's good enough. All right, so we're gonna whack off little pieces. Put them in carefully. So, like I said, you could, if you want. If you're okay with fewer colors, you could make your wells a little bit bigger. I'd rather have less paint and more colors. But that's just me. This is going to stiffen up greatly when you um, bake it. is just a little bit too small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. It's sticking in my finger. Okay. So I'm going to use one of my tools here to add my, my grandmother's lace making. I th I'm pretty sure this is a lace making thing. And I don't know if it was hers or my great-grandmother's because I don't remember my grandmother ever making lace. That doesn't mean she didn't. And she did a lot of crafty needlework type things, but I don't remember her ever making lace. I know my great-grandmother did, though. There's no way on the planet I'm going to get my fingers in here. These wells are too small. There's a bunch of really great YouTubers out there that do miniatures. That's all they do are miniatures. I don't get it. I mean, I think they're fascinating, but I would never be able to just do that and get my fingers into that kind of thing. Prop your little walls up and push them down into each other. I have a bunch of different tools. I have this one too. I used this one a little bit last night. Some of these are clay tools. Some of them are tools from um, jewelry making or other things. I just, I like tools even though I don't really play with clay as a rule. I like tools and sticks and things. <laughs> so I like to, I usually use them for, you know, glue and stuff, so not usually what they're intended for.
trying to make sure I don't see daylight through my walls. I don't want any daylight. Constantly turning it around, pushing, checking. And after you're done baking it, you're going to want to seal it with a varnish or some kind of sealer. Um, that'll do a couple of things. So it will. Um, in theory, seal up any holes if you missed a hole so that you don't have one color bleed into the other or water seep down into the case. Um, it'll also seal the polymer clay so that it doesn't you don't have to worry about it absorbing any paint. Because unvarnished, it's a bit of a porous um, item. This little wall is just not, let's see. That little wall was just not working. Let's try that again. Might be a little bit on the short side. Let's try that again. Now it's stuck to my finger. Okay. Oh yeah, it's just too small. Let's give it some more clay because it's not, it's got a big hole in it. Okay. It's not like I don't have enough clay. And it's warm as hell here right now, so I don't have to worry about conditioning it too much either. It's already soft. It might be too soft. Although I don't think that's possible. It's polymer clay. Okay, then I took this thing. I don't know what this thing is. Maybe one of you knows, you can tell me. And I just put it inside of each well to make sure the walls are straight, that they were deep enough. Hopefully there weren't any holes anywhere. And this isn't any prettier than the other one. The other one wasn't pretty either. <laughs> but it, I was, it wasn't about being pretty. It was about being functional. Okay. We're going to bake that and we'll be right back. Okay. We've baked it and it's um, warm still. We're going to let it cool off a little bit and then we're going to coat the whole thing with some glaze. I happen to have this really old bottle of Lee Ward's Clear Glaze. Lee Ward's hasn't been in business in like a million years, so I don't know even where I got this. Um, and I've inherited quite a few arts and crafts supplies from friends who have passed, unfortunately, over the years. And it's possible this is from one of their stashes, and I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's still clear and good. It hasn't yellowed or anything, so we're going to use that. But we're going to let this clear, this uh, cool off first. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, it's all cooled off now, so we're going to open up our glaze here. 
<clears throat> I've got the fans on and everything because this stuff smells bad. I don't mean bad like it's gone bad, I mean bad like it stinks. And we're going to just really give it a good thorough coating inside of each little hole. It looks like I had a little paint on this brush. <laughs> Oops. That's alright. It's going to be sealed in the glaze now. And get the bottoms first and make sure I get a nice coating on the bottoms. And then just really swish it around and get all the sides. Use an older brush for this one that, you know, maybe is a bit past it. Okay. One that if you can't get it cleaned later, it's not going to matter. seal this up. Alright, this will take quite a few minutes to dry, but once it does, I am going to fill it up like I did the other one um, with a selection of paints, and I'm going to make a little color key for it, and this is going to be in one of the mystery boxes um, or regifted or something, and so there's that, and I love it. I think it's a great idea, and it's a very small little tin, and it's a little thicker than the other one, um, but you can get more paint in it because your wells end up being a little deeper and it's just perfect enough to work in your um, if you're doing a um, my year journal and you're just playing around with little watercolors in there or documenting some things on a trip and want to do a little painting a little ATC card um, work in your planner this is a perfect you can even do small little paintings this is enough paint in here to do some small a couple small paintings so there you have it. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. Don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'm going to let this dry and fill it up with paint, and I will see you all later. Bye.